Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple of cards featuring this Altenew Wings and Petals project kit. This is one of their Craft Your Life project kits, which is multiple products. Great big stamp set, embossing folder, die set, and stencil set. Layering stencil set, not just like, you know. And, oh, I had fun. <laughs> I had fun. Um, I made a couple cards using everything in this kit because I was focusing more on the embossing folder and then the stencils and then I used the stamp set for the sentiments and then I was using the oh, butterflies. Love, love. So, yeah, made my cards, quite enjoyed myself. You can't go wrong with, you know, layer stencil. I've talked about this a lot. I love the layer stencils we have now, whether it's for, you know, stamp set or an embossing folder or a wafer die or just, you know, a layering stencil that creates a pattern or a design. I love them. They're just, it's therapeutic in a sense. So that's, it was some good crafting therapy. Anywho, like always, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. My links are affiliate links, so that just means that if you click on one of my links and end up placing an order, I do get a little kickback from that at no extra cost to you. It is what helps pay the bills, keeps the channel going, all the things. That's it. Yeah, that's it for the housekeeping. Let's get into actually making the cards. So the first thing I did was I used the embossing folder. And I am going to emboss um, some panels of Simon Says Stamp Smooth White cardstock. And with the Altenew embossing folders and my Anna Griffin Empress die cut machine, I found that one cutting plate and the magnetic plate is what I need to get like a good embossed impression. And I've been talking about this more and more lately. I've held off on spritzing my cardstock with water. If you find that whatever it is you're embossing in whatever brand, embossing folder, cardstock, whatever, if you find that your cardstock is cracking, and you'll, trust me, you'll know, with whatever embossing folder you're using, try lightly misting your cardstock with water. I've shown that in a million videos, and it was just a habit for the longest time, and then for whatever reason, I just stopped doing it, and so far, so good. <laughs> But if it's a really, really deep, deep detailed folder, I recommend the water, you know? So I embossed the backgrounds and then I've got my, this is the big Altenew grip mat. And I've been showing this in more and more videos. This was a trick I picked up from Lydia Evans at Altenew is storing my grip mats in mesh bags. Game changer. Especially this big one because I love this big grip mat, but... You got, it's a good thing I remove the sounds when I do my editing because if y'all could hear me swearing when I was like removing the acetate <laughs> it just it drove me nuts and oh the mesh bags so much easier and yeah they fit this big one um love so anyway that's just another little random tip if you haven't seen those other videos I've talked about it it just makes life a little bit easier for me because I have multiple grip mats. No one needs multiples, you know, but because I do this as a job, I do have multiples from different brands and need a way to store them and the mesh bags, love. So anyway, I stuck both of the panels to the grip mat and then I am using the, the inks I'm showing there on screen and some Altenew mini blending brushes. I wanted to make these floral flowers like kind of orangey pink, you know, so I would go in with the lightest orange, which was uh, sun-kissed, and then I would add some pinkalicious, and then some orange cream. And after stenciling the first one on the left, I would just use one of my microfiber cloths to kind of wipe away the ink sitting on the stencil before going to the next, the next card front, only because I didn't want to pick up like the pink ink on my orange brush. That's the only reason. And it was just, yeah, see, just wipe it off, move it to the next one repeat the process and on that first stencil I use there's an there with Altenew's stencils there's usually a or there's always um an etch line delineating between like if there's a separate area so that first stencil there was a line and then there was this like individual little weird blob and I was like mm, wasn't sure it was that one 
like pedal. That's why. Because it was just, it was separate. And then once I was like doing the stenciling, I was like, oh, okay, perfect. Did it. So did all of that. And then I used like the same oranges. I just went with the deeper tones because this is the newer, like warm and cozy fresh dye ink set. So I used the orange cream, autumn blaze and fire brick for the centers. And again, to be totally transparent, I didn't do a very good job lining up the flower centers. I will also admit it was really late at night when I was doing this. I was tired and just like I said, crafting therapy, you know? So I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention and I just, I kind of, I honestly kind of didn't care. <laughs> but I was like, oh, great. You know, I got them all lined up perfectly on the, the one flower on the right and the other two. I just wasn't doing it. But you know what? It didn't matter, really. I just kind of went back over it, used the stencils to kind of go back over it here and there. And then I just took the brush and just lightly blended it. And it was fine. It was fine, you know? Sometimes... It's just not worth fighting with it. And it's uh, more often than not, it's usually, yeah, late in the day and I'm just tired. And it's like, these are the times usually you should just walk away for a bit and go have a nap, <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> but it was fine. I didn't really care. And in the end, I was still like super happy. And I was it's so enjoying just adding all these colors. And I've kind of talked about this before, I re like, because I love embossing folders, which is hilarious, because when they really started making kind of a comeback, because we've had embossing folders in card making for, like, two decades, but when they started making a comeback, I was kind of like, really? Really? You know? Mm. Oh, all the brands totally proved me so wrong, because, like, look at all these designs we have, and the stencils. We didn't have those back in the day. You know, so you combine embossing folders with stencils and all the things. And I'm just like, I am here for it. <laughs> like, it's hard to show on camera. Even at the end, it is hard to really show, especially once you've added all the color, like all that raised embossing. But I really love it. It just, yeah, you know, it's a great way to add some like texture and dimension without adding a whole lot of bulk. So I used the greens. As I'm going on my like little side tangents, I used the greens I showed on screen there to do all the greenery. And same thing. There was like lines, you know, between the different sections to show like this. And then everything just lined up. And even in my, you know, mental state of exhaustion and just late at night, yada, yada, like it all just worked. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. After I was done the stenciling, I did run these through a second time with the embossing folder it just kind of clicks into place you can just feel it you just shimmy it and it just you know fits where it's supposed to and I ran it through again because sometimes depending if you're adding like a lot of ink or you know different techniques and things it starts to flatten out that embossing a little bit so I just run it through with the folder again to, to press it back into place and we're good to go and then the butterflies so the coordinating die set in this kit die cuts all of the like larger sentiments in the stamp set and then there's these individual butterfly wafer dies and oh, love like I liked it from like just looking at it but actually making with them I was like oh oh these were very well thought out love so I die cut the solid parts from just thin white cards like this is just hammer mill cardstock and I blended on the orange inks. No, you could totally do whatever colors you want. You know, I love how on the, the packaging it shows like pinks and purples. I think that's really pretty. But the more I was looking at them, I was like, they look like monarchs. And I, lo I love monarchs. And because I already was using oranges, you know, on those florals, I was like, well, I've got the oranges sitting right here. Like, let's do it. So that's what I did. I used the orange cream and the autumn blaze inks on these solid pieces. I wasn't making my blends perfect. One, the inks soften and smooth out on their own anyway. And two, the blend doesn't need to be perfect because the detail die cut part is going to cover up a lot of this. So I'm just getting that color on there. And then yeah, the detail die cut portion of these is chef's kiss perfection. I die cut those from Altenu Jet Black cardstock. And... You're going to see in a second here once I get everything off the grip mat. And then once those, like, look at it. I haven't even adhered them yet. Like, look at them. I oh, love it. Love it. So I just used some craft tacky glue to adhere them. And you can keep them just as is. Like, just 
this these individual pieces because all the die cuts for all the pieces are just they're in and their own way they're complete but you can also layer them up the way the packaging shows so with the big ones I did layer them as they're intended and they just line right up and love it but again you can use them on their own because you know they've got the, the bodies and the and their little antennae everything you know so that, I thought that was kind of a nice touch it just gives you more options and I, I do love options so for the big ones I did layer them as intended as you can see and oh they're so pretty they're so pretty the little ones I didn't you can layer them up as well and they look fabulous but I decided because the large ones are so large because my card fronts are a two size so four and a quarter by five and a half inches so you'll see like that butterfly takes up a big chunk of this card which I love so for the little ones I decided I would use them on the inside of my card so I didn't want to layer them up to create any extra bulk. And so I end up with like a couple left over, but I just put them back in the packaging for the next time I use this set. And then of course I'm gonna add splatter. So I've got my all to new metallic watercolors and I'd already put water in this, the white shimmer pan and then the red shimmer. <laughs> and again, I'm only laughing at myself now because I think it's funny. Um, Cause when I was doing this, again, reminder, middle of the night, my brain is just kind of mush, whatever. And I was like trying to get like a pink shade. So I was like, mm, I'm going to mix this white and the red color to make a pink. Yeah, there's a pink right there. It's right there. It's the bottom, you know, bottom right on screen. That's the color I created. I was, I was being so brilliant. <laughs> so I just think it's funny now. <laughs> I'm, I am actually quite good at mixing colors, you know, coming up with custom colors of things. But this one I was like, ooh, like look at me. And it's literally the exact same color. <laughs> so whatever it's pretty doesn't matter so I mix them I get add, added my water you saw me swirl it around I mix them created my custom pink that is already in the palette and then I stuck it onto a little acrylic block put the the embossed card fronts into my splat box and then just you just drag the brush off the edge of the acrylic block to create splatter I just wanted like a light splatter not not a ton you know sometimes I add five different types of splatter and you know it just again always depends on my mood but I just wanted a little bit of splatter you know can't go wrong with it it adds a little bit of extra shimmer so splattered both of these with my my super special amazing custom color <laughs> let those dry and then for the sentiments I've got a piece of uh, rubellite cardstock and my stamp wheel and I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments from the uh, wings and petals stamp set and because these stamps are um I like to like chunky you know they're they're more solid I'm inking up and stamping them multiple times with clear embossing ink to make sure that I am stamping like the whole sentiment because especially if you're dealing with solid stamps solid images anything with really you know thick line weight etc I find that I would rather ink up and stamp multiple times I get much better coverage with the embossing powder because there's more for it to cling to. Like there's more of that sticky ink. So stamp those sentiments multiple times and then coated it with some detail white embossing powder. Melted that with my heat tool. And then I used the coordinating wafer die to die cut those sentiments. And then my card bases are also A2 cards. They're going to be top folding A2 cards. Four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I put those in my stamp wheel finally figured out if I line them up like this I can keep the card open which yes the stamp wheel 2.0 which is bigger works even better for this it is I will be showing that more in videos soon just stay tuned but this also works too so I lined up my card base and I stamped another sentiment from that stamp set using the rubellite ink so lined it up inked up the stamp stamped it good to go and then I'll show at the very end when I open the card I adhered those smaller blood um, smaller butterflies onto the inside as well just to finish it off and then the card fronts are getting adhered to the card bases with the craft tacky glue so getting those popped into place always making sure that I'm actually adhering to the card front and not the back and that the card is oriented properly because I think all y'all We've, I think we've all done it at least once when you, you know, adhere your card front to the card base and your card was upside down or backwards. So fun, you know? So try to always make it a habit of like double checking before I get things adhered. 
And then the sentiments, I'm going to pop up with just thin foam squares. So stick those on the back there. And then once I've got these into place, I can peel off the backing and then pop these onto um, both of these card fronts. And then after I got those, I'm going to adhere the butterflies. And I decided to make it so like almost like the butterflies kind of landing on the sentiment. And this is where you'll see how big these butterflies are. I love them. I love them. They're so pretty. So got my butterflies popped into place. And then as my final little bit of embellishment, I pulled out these. Uh, these are the Sunkissed Delights enamel dots. So they're not the same as the orange inks I use because the orange inks are from the warm and cozy pack. But this is what I had. And this this one orange shade was close enough. So it was great. So added those and that finished off these cards. And like I said, it's kind of hard to show the embossing on my camera, but it's there and it's really pretty. And the colors are pretty and the butterflies are adorable and my amazing <laughs> custom Ultimate Shimmer Splatter Chef's Kiss. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Thumbs up and commenting helps a ton. It's always very much appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't. I would love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much to my amazing Patreon supporters. For anyone that might be interested in joining my Patreon community and supporting me, the link to my Patreon is in the description box below the video. For everyone else, as always, thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And here's a couple other videos for you to check out in case you miss them. Bye!